Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Big Black River Bridge, located in Hines and Warren County, Mississippi, between Union Major General John McClernand and his 13th Army Corps, and Confederate Generals John Bowen and John Vaughn, with elements of Bowen's Division and Vaughn's Brigade, on the 17th of May, 1863. Confederate General Pemberton and his forces had successfully escaped Ulysses S. Grant's grasp at Champion Hill when they reached the Big Black River Bridge over, you know it, the Big Black River. Once they had reached a space they could breathe, Pemberton realized that Grant was going to follow him. Needing to set up a defensive force, Pemberton appointed Confederate Generals Bowen and Vaughn with their respective troops to hold the east back of the river. The purpose was to keep the bridge secure so General Loring, who was still in his wake, get across. Unfortunately for Pemberton and his men, he didn't realize that Loring had already been pushed back and denied access to the bridge due to the Union push. Union General McClernand moved his 13th Corps westward and unexpectedly found himself in front of 5,000 Confederate soldiers on this side of the river. Worse yet for McClernand, they were behind a series of defensive fortifications consisting of cotton bales along with an abatis that had been built. McClernand did not want to mess around and just ordered his artillery to open fire hoping they might blow the fortifications down since they were so recently constructed. While the artillery rained down on the Confederate soldiers, Union Brigadier General Michael K. Lawler formed his troops up into a column where they traveled along a meander scar that followed the river. For those of you like me who did not know what a meander scar is, it is an empty water channel of where a lake was formed. The river had cut the land away over a long period of time, leaving a natural channel that vaguely followed the river and marks where the river used to flow. Maybe it was planned, or maybe they're tired of meandering in a meander scar, but Lawler decided to do something this channel's seen a lot of lately, form up with bayonets and perform a bayonet charge. 1,500 men screamed across the open ground, wading through waist-deep bayou water and into the Confederate fortifications. This was evidently unexpected, as the Confederates shrieked and abandoned the fortifications, leaving behind more than 18 cannon as they tried to run across the bridge. Sadly, many of them drowned trying to get across the river, with more than 1,800 of them being captured. Pemberton was not dismayed by his men's loss, but he did decide to put the bridge to the torch, and instead he decided to use steamboats that had come across as a portable bridge. Total losses for the Union were 279 men, including 39 killed, 237 wounded, and 3 missing, while the Confederates themselves lost far more than they recorded. What is known is that there was a total of 1,851 men that were captured, along with 18 cannon and 5 battle flags. It is also known that a very large number of men died, and it was reported that far less than half of the 5,000 defending troops made it back. That means with a loss of at least 2,500 men conservatively, at least 750 men, if not more, drowned in the river or just disappeared. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.